Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my movie review show. I'm going to go through the movie and I'm going to explain a lot of little details and things in the movie that were very interesting or surprising or funny or creative uh, about the movie The Endless. So that is what I'll be doing now. Spoilers for the movie. So a man gets a package in the mail. And it's, a, it's a little package like that. It's got a videotape in it, video cassette. The woman in the video reminds him of the place that he used to be. Him and his roommate guy, buddy friend, used to be in this cult. They both, they both thought that everybody was going to be dead already, but this is a new video. And they, they believed they were all going to kill themselves. So these two people escaped and uh, were on the news and telling their story about escaping this cult at when they were younger children. They're talking to a therapist about the about how they feel about stuff, and well, the one guy is like, nah, "It's better for us to be out there," and he doesn't get it. The other guy's like, "It was nicer there, and maybe we were wrong for leaving." There's a funny scene where he is uh, one of the guys is the the guy that doesn't want to go back is getting a haircut from the other dude, and uh, he says something to him, and it kind of like irritates him. So the guy's like shaving his head, and he goes. Bzzz! And he just shaves his head and runs off like the middle, just a big stripe down the middle. And it's kind of funny. <laughs> I like that scene. So they both decide that it's a good idea for them to go back to this place just for closure. To, to see if everything was or was not the way that they believed that it, that it was in their minds because they were younger when they were there. And then they stop on the side of the road because one of them needs to pee. And this guy notices that there's these weird little like sticks these weird little, like, stick object things that are kind of sticking out of the side of the road. And uh, they're like, I don't know, it's just a natural rock formation or something. And one of them, like, looks up and there's birds circling around. But they're, like, in a, like an actual circle. Like, these birds are, like, in a weird little circle. And he looks up and he sees them and they're doing their weird little circle thing. And then he kind of looks, oh, he looks over here and there's another, like, little bird circle. And he goes back and the other ones are gone. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. This little weird bird circle thing going on. This little bird circle jerk. Circle bird jerk. Bird jerk. Chirp chirp. It's a circle chirp. <laughs> so they get back to this place, and it's called Camp Arcadia. And there is a very generic, culty, Jehovah's Witness looking guy standing there smiling like a weirdo with a big, with a white button down shirt. And a fanny pack, and he looks just like, you know, just like you'd expect, like, a culty person to look. And, uh, they get there, and they, they, they meet up with the old guy that they considered, like, the leader of the group, the leader of the cult, and, uh, and he hasn't aged. And, like, you guys, you haven't aged a bit. Like, like look at you guys, you're all grown up, because they've been out there. These people here seem to have not aged since, since then, so they're, they're here there's a guy that they saw when they first arrived that was just kind of running just angrily. I think they said something to him like, hey, how's it going, man? And he's just like... <laughs> he's just running. They, they start talking about how it takes a long time to master something. Like, a lot of the people in the group have something that they're good at but they want to be better at or something that they're bad at that they want to be good at. So there's a big, a big part of it where... They are talking about, like, it takes a million hours to master something, and, you know, you know, there's no time. There's just no time to do it. So, in this place, they even mention it at, uh, at like, a bonfire that evening that, you know, one of them says, everybody here has something that they do that they're good at, and, you know, they have their, their thing. And they, they ask the one dude, like, do you have a thing? And he's like, no, nah, I don't really have a thing. But he was into photography, but, like, it wasn't ever really a thing. Skeptical guy goes and takes a, goes for a run, and he sees creepy running man happening again. And he sees these people with uh, like big beer kegs with a special logo on it, and they're kind of looking at him funny while he's running. The main guy's talking to skeptical guy, and he has an equation, this this weird mathematical equation written on a dry erase board, and he says he hasn't solved it. He hasn't been able to figure it out yet. So I was like, all right, maybe that's his thing. You know, he's, he's putting in his hours, he's trying to get better at this thing. And he's, you know, he's... So there is a, an unfinished equation about 
something, and he's explaining to the guy that, you know, you, you need to figure this out. If you think things were weird here when you were a child, you, you may have fuzzy memories and not understand those things because you were young. Now that you're here and you're an adult, you can make up your own decisions. You can make up your own mind and figure out what's, what's going on around here if you think things were weird. Uh, anyway, after, after the main bonfire thing, they do this weird tug-of-war thing where they have a, a big rope and they take turns, a couple of them take turns grabbing the rope and trying to pull on it, but it's not them against them, it is them. There is, the rope goes out into the darkness. It goes out and up. It goes out and up into the sky, basically. It's out and up into the sky. And and they have to grab it and and, and pull on it. And it's and it's uh, the the main the main cult leader guy says that it's a it's a metaphor for for overcoming your your fears or doing the things that you set out to do or becoming better something like that. So he he goes and does it and he's like who's next and they choose this guy and he's like ah he does it like he 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 wins like it kind of it works or whatever he does his thing and skeptical boy <laughs> skeptical guy doesn't uh, he grabs the rope and. It immediately gets like just yanked out of his hands, and his his hand starts bleeding. He gets a big bloody cut thing. And I was trying to figure out the symbolism and then like what they were trying to go for. Like, does he not have a thing? Is he not striving to be better? So I started thinking maybe it was like th this entity, something surrounding the camp, was keeping everybody young so that they could learn and be the best people at whatever they choose to be. Like maybe these people have figured out that they're gonna live there forever and stay young so, so that they can be better and just be the best at the thing that they want to accomplish or whatever. I thought maybe there was something about the beer, like maybe this is like special god beer and it's keeping them young. It's like the fountain of youth beer or something. And apparently all the things that these people are good at, they're getting paid for. So everybody that's living there is also getting paid so they don't really have to worry about anything so they don't ever have to leave that place. So it's like maybe the entity's trying to keep them there by by making it so comfortable. One of the guys around the bonfire is doing card tricks and uh, he's like, hey, pick a card, any card. And the guy picks one and he, he, he does the card trick correctly and he says, is this your card? And the guy says, no, he lies about it. The skeptical man tells him no and the guy's like, hmm, bullshit. I totally nailed it. And then he's like, check this one out and he has a baseball. Throws it up a couple times. Throws the baseball up, throws it up, throws it up, and then throws it way up. And he grabs Skeptical Man's hand, and he's like, hold on, that's, that's all right, hold on. And he puts his hand like this, and, uh, and he just sits there for a minute, and the ball comes back into his hand. And I was like, okay, so there's like a black hole above you. So the guy that actually wanted to be there in order to win the tug-of-war match... He tied the rope around himself and he used a fishing knot. And he had mentioned that he liked fishing, but he was never really good at it. So I was like, all right, there's his thing. His thing is wanting to be a fisherman, and that was the thing that he could get better at if he stayed there, I guess. So he, he wins, the, he wins the, the demon rope tug-of-war match against Satan in the night sky, I guess. The, the woman that's, like, drawing has been sketching this big thing uh, about the camp, drawing the camp, basically, gives, uh, gives her drawing to one of the guys, and you see that there's, you know, the camp looks normal, the night sky is here, but instead of a moon, there are two angry-looking demon eyes in the sky. That uh, There are two moons up in the sky, and the reason that you see two moons is because that's ah, a light reflecting off something, something, something. And I'm like, okay, that girl just drew a demon picture. So, but okay, light refraction, okay. They decide to stay one more day just to check everything out, see how they feel, and make sure, you know, everybody's cool and not going to kill themselves. There is a a shed, this, this shed that is locked with a big old padlock thing and a chain and and beard beer beer guy is guarding it and, like, and he claims that there's rowing equipment in it I don't buy it I don't buy your story you creepy bearded fuck 
All right, so Fishy Man wants to go out shooting guns. So Fishy Man and Skeptical Man go out shooting guns. Fishy Man nails, you know, all the bottles. He's pretty good at it. And Skeptical Man takes takes some shots, takes a lot of shots, and none of the bottles break. He's like, pow, pow, pow. none of the bottles break. And a minute later, he goes over and he finds the bullets, and they have been flattened. The top is flattened. So the bullets didn't just go. He didn't just miss. They didn't go somewhere. Something stopped those bullets. Fucking evil Satan monster, invisible night moon monster. Yeah, probably, probably that, probably time loop night Satan. So I started thinking about them trying to escape. Like them escaping this place, and you still see those little, those little sticks, these little formations, these little staff-like objects that stick out of the ground. And I was thinking, nobody can leave this place because there are like time loops, like black holes, and maybe it's because of the the weird stick things. So Skeptical Man is going for another run, and there is like dust that kicks up into his face and and a sound for no reason. And then he, like, feels air rush past him, and then he sees photographs on the ground, and he picks up the photographs, and they have weird pictures on them. And you see back behind him in the distance, like, a tree falls, like, something, something's going on, like, uh, Satan's going for a run, I guess. And he left some photographs for your ass. Enjoy. There's this little tent, and it's got those weird little pole, those little stick pole things around it, and it's also got a little clock... And it, it is going, me ho, me ho, click, me ho, me ho, click, me ho, click, ho. And it was, a, it was a disturbing moment. There was somebody inside that tent, and they were making noise also. Skeptical Man says something to cult leader guy about being the leader, and the, the guy says, I'm not a leader, I've never been a leader, I just talk more than most people. If anything, you wanted to be the leader, and that's, like, I feel like that was your big problem with me. And he also mentions a third moon. When the third moon happens, something, 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 something. And so, okay, there's already two moons, is it going to be a third moon? As we, we, we got de demon moon man. Demon moons, we are a third moon, get out of here. Get out of here before third moon. Y you done, son. You, you don't fuck around with third moon. One of the pictures that the dude found was a picture of a lake with a little a little buoy thing, and a uh, leader leader guy told him he needs to go there and find out what it is. The secret to what you're wanting to know is at the bottom of the lake. And so him and Fishy Man go out fishing, fishying. And uh, so Skeptical Man and Fishy Man are out, and Fishy Man's catching fish, and Skeptical Man decides it's time to find out, to get to the bottom of this, figure something out. So he takes off his shirt and his pants, and he jumps into the lake, and he goes to the bottom, and the other guy's, like, freaking out because he's not coming back. Uh, but then he does come back, and he's got a box with him, and he's freaking out, and he's like, there was something down there! There was something down there! Let's get out of here now! And But he came back with a box. He found something. And then they cut to, like, a, an overhead shot above the lake, and there's, like, something in the water. There's some large, shadowy thing going on in the water. Drawing sketchy lady has been working on another thing, and she says, here, here's a going away present for you. And it's a large, it's a large picture, a large drawing of the camp, once again, and the forest, and a night monster that's, like, curling over and like coming after them <laughs> and uh i was like yeah that's normal right so they they open the box thing from the bottom of the lake and there's a bunch of rocks in it to keep it down at the bottom of the lake i guess and there's a tape another one of those little tape things and they watch the tape in front of the whole camp they are portrayed as white shirt cultists hi we are this we're from this you should you know we take donations and we're all castrated and things like that. And the whole castration thing pisses off some people. And after they watch the video, they're like, that's a terrible portrayal of what we are and who who we are and what we're doing here. And But we forgive you. Like, it, it's hurtful what you did. It, it, it hurt our beer sales. Like, they were, you know, counting on the beer sales money to keep, to keep their 
camp afloat. And his propaganda video against them mm, hurt their sales. So they're all kind of pissed off, and, and, and apparently he lied about the castration thing. Like, and and uh, Fishy Man thought that that was a real thing, because that's what Skeptical Man told him, that everybody was castrated. Skeptical Man goes and finds this little shed cabin thing where there is a very, a very animated angry person and he's just talking shit just talking mad stuff on this dude this on skeptical man and he's like i remember you you're you're that retarded hobbit looking dude you're, you're the one that brain your brain don't work quite right uh, yeah you dummy what are you doing back here i remember you he explains the time loop situation and he basically says you got to kill yourself or that monster's going to take you right out of your shoes and it's going to be horrible. The man speaking to Skeptical Man is, is hanging in the shed because he has tried to kill himself and it didn't work. And he's right back there. And he's pissed off. So he tells the dude that if, if you want my help getting out of here, I need you to go find me a gun. And he says, here's a compass. Only follow the compass. Don't... Don't focus on anything else. This is the only way you're going to get there. And he draws him a little map and tells him to go get him a gun. There is a guy in a house, and he's chained. He's got he's got a, a handcuff thing, and he's chained to a wall. And he's like, yeah, come on in, man, whatever. You got any drugs? Can I can I do some drugs with you? If you have drugs, tell me if you got drugs. Like, share them with me. And he's chained to a wall, and another guy walks up, and he's like, I'm trying to keep my friend clean. I, he came here a while back, and I'm... I'm just trying to like keep him clean, keep him away from drugs until he, you know, until he can sort it all out and get better. The angry, hanging himself, kill yourself, dude, get me a gun guy, uh, from a minute ago was. He was talking about how the kid was really dumb, how the how skeptical man when he was a child he was really dumb and he had a very low IQ, and so I was thinking like maybe that was part of the deal, like you have to be dumb, you have to not have a certain level of intelligence or think about the world in a, in a certain way and that's the only way that you can escape and get out of here later they're talking about the the time restarting like if you don't make it out of here within a certain time time's just gonna restart and you're just gonna do it all over again and somebody like flicks a cigarette and it goes like past one of those stick things I was talking about and it just disappears and I was like okay time loop the sticks have something to do with the time loop the guy gets the gun from the druggy man and the guy trying to help him and as he's leaving, he watches the, the, the helper guy dumping gas all over their house. And he's like, you, you want to try it? You ready to try it this time, buddy? And he's like, yeah, go for it. And he lights himself and the whole house on fire and he's going to kill him Because they already know they're stuck in the loop. And they, so death is the only way out. Lights himself on fire, the place goes up. And then, boom, time reset. And you see the guy on the porch and his buddy... And he's like, hey, man, I just came here to talk and help you out or whatever. And, uh, yeah, I, oh, man, I like this movie a lot. On the way back from getting the gun, Skeptical Man comes across the tent again. The, uh, the weird time loop tent that's on that little... It's on that time loop, and the guy inside of the tent is losing his mind. And he gets closer this time, and he looks in the window... And the guy's like, yeah, and he's like running, and then he starts back at the same place, and then he's running. He's looking through the window at this guy. Guy is trying to do something, like trying to kill himself or whatever, I don't know. But he's in the tent, and he's just like, yeah, and he just keeps resetting. He just keeps coming back to the same spot where he's like sitting down, getting ready to try and kill himself or something. There's an old-timey record player, one of those big... You know, one of those things. I don't know what the fuck they're called. Old-timey record player thing is going on. So it makes me think maybe he's been there for a really, really long time. And, you know, it's the tent with all like the all those time sticks around it. He's stuck in this, like, boop, boop, this little quick loop. But he sees the guy looking at him through the window, and he starts to kind of look over. Boop, boop, and he keeps going back and forth, and, like, he starts to see him, and he's like, What are you still doing here? Like, get out! <laughs> Trying to get him to... Uh, it's, it's a little haunting. It's very... 
I don't know, it's very, very chilling. And he finds this old projector, this old film projector thing, and sets it up and starts watching it, and the person in the film is basically like, I'm setting this up so you can see what's happening, I'm trying to figure it out. He's recording this moment, and then as you're watching on the screen, it it stops and then starts again, but it's it's another shot. It's another shot of that shot. It's an inception thing. It's a... I'm filming this, and now this is happening. Boom. I'm filming this, and now I'm filming this, and now this is happening. Boom. I'm filming this, I'm filming this, I'm filming this, and now this is... I'm Boom. I'm filming, filming, filming this, and this is... Like, you just keep seeing, like... It's like looking in a mirror that's reflecting another mirror, basically. And then the projector, like, flies off the table. I don't think anything touches it. I feel like the the devil god was angry, or the projector just couldn't handle the time loop or something. And it just like, phew, like flies off the screen. And I was like, that's amazing! So Skeptical Man gets back to Yelly Insult Man, who has hung himself, Hangy Man, and gives him the gun that he told him he was going to give him, and uh, and then leaves and goes back to camp. He doesn't really stay. And the guy takes the gun, and he's like, all right. No. He's just shooting up into the sky like, screw you, devil, knight, rope tug of war god and then uh, and then he does a thing and he's like I'm out camera cuts away boom blood all over his motorcycle then immediately as it's after that happens just a split second later you hear his voice showing up <laughs> you hear his voice going god damn it so they're finally allowed to go in this forbidden cabin they get in there and there's a little TV and there's a bunch of old film reels and all kinds of things, and I'm like, are you inside God's mind right now? Is this like, is this, are these just recordings of your life? And it starts showing scenes from the creature, from the thing's perspective. Moments when it was watching them. When it was looking at them, and, and they, like, it was there and they didn't know it. Uh, there's a, the surprise shot where, the, when the guy went down under the water and he was like, I... Uh, there's something down there. It shows from his perspective the guy, the guy, skeptical man's face going like... <gasps> because he was looking right into the face of this creature, whatever it is. And it was, uh, it almost felt a little bit like the, like Matrix, the uh, Matrix Reloaded at the end where they're like, he finds the, uh, the what's his face, the designer guy or whatever, the bearded guy that's like, well, there are many possibilities and... You could, on the one hand, you could be like, whatever. And it's like, there's a bunch of TVs behind him with, like, infinite possibilities and stuff. There's a quick scene where the rope, the tug-of-war rope thing, gets just, it just falls down from the sky. And, uh, it's not really explained, it just happens. Like, here's the rope. <laughs> like, screw the rope, it's too late, you know, time has run out, I guess. And then everything goes, banana-nana-bonk-bonk-bonker-fucking-nanas. And shit just starts fucking flying around. They're getting in the car. They're trying to make it work. The battery's messed up because of the same shit the guy was talking about earlier. Like, you didn't get a new battery, so now we got to try to get this thing out. They're pushing the car. There's, like, swirling shit in the background. It's going... And it's, like, fucking up the forest. And there's, like, explosions and weird shit floating around in the back while they're trying to escape and they're pushing this car. They're pushing the car. They're talking about their friendship. Like, I love you, bro. I love you too, bro. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, bro. Maybe they fucking good. It's all good. Let's just try to survive. Let's get out of here. And they're pushing the car. The car finally starts as they're pushing it and they're making their getaway. So they're back on the road and they're headed out of there. Car's working. Everything's good. Everything's in the rear view. Like, they can't even see it anymore. I think they've crossed the, the stick, the last stick portal back into the normal world. There's like a mirror shell thing in front of them. There's a bird that tries to fly into it and it just like, boom. The bird just goes, boom. Like, falls off of it. And uh, and they're just going for it. They're like, screw this, we're going. And they're showing the reflection of the cars coming toward each other. Like, just go for it. And they go, smoosh. They smash past it. And I guess everything's okay. This is a, an amazing movie. I loved it very, very much. It's spoke to me in a way that I love. It's a very, it's a smaller movie. It's a little more intimate. It's not a big budget thing, but it was done fantastically. When I was done, I said magnificent out loud, 
and I mean it. I loved this movie very, very much, and I'm glad I was able to watch it. And thank you, Cyber Houdini, for sub suggesting it. That's everybody's personal preference, but I would recommend it very highly. I think it's a great movie. It's uh, it's a little sci-fi, a little supernatural, a little bit thriller, and it's got a little bit of comedy. It's not like it's not super funny, but it's got some comedy, and I enjoyed it very, very much.